Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness. Police officers take a pledge to protect and serve, and sometimes that pledge brings them face to face with the paranormal. Those are the stories I'll be presenting here tonight. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. for new content. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and comment below. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, together, together. I was appointed to guard a sick prisoner at the district headquarters hospital. I liked the duty because it was just eight hours a day, rather than my usual 12-hour tours. Plus, it was nice and calm. I'd just sit there on a bench in his room, reading and having a look at the nurses. Nothing to complain about. Everything was fine, except for the prisoner that I was guarding. He was very old and feeble. I don't know what he was diagnosed with but he looked like a skeleton with skin. He had a big, bald head, his eyes were popping right out of their sockets, and his mouth was always wide open, and yet he was unresponsive. It was torture to watch him getting shots because he had no muscle left at all, just skin and bones. Although he was unresponsive, oddly, you would never see him asleep. He would just spend all day long staring at the wall with a blank expression. I used to think to myself, he's not really here. He's somewhere in another realm waiting to die. There was something astoundingly creepy about this guy, I'm telling you. Anyway, I sat next to him daily from 4 p.m. till midnight. He wouldn't move, he wouldn't talk, and he didn't seem to feel anything. He didn't even look around at all, just a straight, constant gaze at the wall. One night, at the end of my shift, I was tired and bored, counting the minutes until midnight for the guard to come and relieve me so I could go home. There was complete silence in the ward. So to fight the boredom, I picked up a magazine and began to read it for the third time. Barely a few minutes went by, and I began to feel uncomfortable. So I looked up, and the old man, who hadn't moved in God knows how long, had turned his head and was staring directly at me. There's no way I can fully explain just how uneasy this made me feel. I was barely three feet away from him, sitting on a bench right next to his bed. He fixed a straight, uninterrupted gaze on me, like he was looking into my soul not speaking a word. Thank God just moments later my colleague appeared to relieve me. We talked briefly, I handed him my log register and I got out of that hospital as fast as I could and I took a cab ride home. I still lived with my parents at the time. It was around 1 a.m. when the cab dropped me off in my neighborhood. From there I had a 10 minute walk by foot to my home as the streets were far too narrow for vehicles. My home was located at the very end of a dark street. We didn't have public lights on the road, and no one but my parents would leave their outside lights on, and they only did it when I was coming home late from work. So, turning onto my street, I was engulfed in darkness, save for a single glowing light bulb at my parents' house at the very end of the road. Suddenly, I saw somebody right in the middle of the street, walking towards me. I slowed down a bit to observe. He was about 40 yards ahead, walking very slowly, leaning heavily to the right, and shuffling along with a strange halting gait. I have never encountered anyone on the street that late at night. I went on high alert. Something inside me screamed, You're in danger. Who are you? I called out. I never stopped walking, but I did slow down a bit while approaching him. But it was just a matter of seconds before I was close enough to get a clear look at him. And that's when I saw his face. May the Lord have mercy on my soul. It was that same sick old prisoner that I had just left at the hospital an hour earlier. He was wearing the same hospital gown, had the same look on his face, 
and he was shuffling along with bare feet. He looked at me as I passed him by, and then he turned around slowly and began walking towards me again. I didn't run, but I did walk super fast to my home. As I got to the front door, I rang the bell furiously, praying to God that my father would open the door fast. I kept pressing the doorbell while staring at this man slowly approaching me. What if he gets me, I wondered. Should I shout or attack him? I didn't want anyone to know how afraid I was of this sick old man. Thankfully, my father opened the door, chiding me for being so impatient. Before going inside, I glanced around, but there was nobody on the street now. My father went back to his room without noticing how scared I was. I went to my room and sat down and thought about what just happened. Did I see a ghost? How is this possible? I sat there thinking of any legitimate reason that could explain this. My room had a window that looked onto the street, and I noticed that somebody was outside my window. I heard those same shuffling footsteps outside, and then a low-pitched voice mumbling mournfully. I sat there, frozen, trying to make out the words, but I couldn't. I couldn't understand what he was saying but he sounded deeply wounded, as if expressing grief. Then it stopped. No sound of any kind. I could feel that nobody was outside my window anymore. And then it struck me. Why don't I just call the hospital? I could just ask my colleague how the patient was doing. So I picked up my cell phone, and lo and behold, there was a text message that was sent by my colleague a half hour earlier. It said, Don't come to the hospital for duty tomorrow. The sick prisoner died shortly after you left. I'm going home. Report to the police station tomorrow. No matter how I try to spin this, to convince myself that it wasn't paranormal, I fail. I'm a police officer in Brazil. During a riot last year at the penitentiary, 30 inmates were killed. This year, I was called to that same penitentiary to deal with a bureaucratic issue they were having. While talking to the director of the penitentiary, he spoke to me off the record about something weird that they caught on their surveillance camera, and with some discomfort, he showed me the video. I watched on this tape a guy seemingly appear out of nowhere in the file room at 2 a.m. He walked to the center of the room and started laughing maniacally, and then he walked out of the room. I pointed out to the director that there had been a security compromise. If the inmate was able to invade a room so easily, he could walk anywhere he wanted within the penitentiary. Also, I observed that the guy was probably acting that way because he was either on drugs or mentally ill. But apparently, those were not the problems that the staff had with that video. The director told me, Number one, the man on the tape appeared on camera from the right, but there's no door to the right in that room. Number two, the alarm in the room didn't ring at all, indicating a breach, but there was nothing wrong with the alarm system. But the biggest problem they had was number three. The man on the video was very well known to the staff. It was a convict who was beheaded during the riot last year. Then the director showed me the file of this dead inmate. Everything matched. It was the guy in the video, right down to his tattoos. The man caught on tape just a week previously was the same man who was slaughtered during the riot a year before. I've no doubt at all. Oh. I was a constable in South Australia. One night we received a noise complaint about a party being held in an old derelict building on the outskirts of town. As we approached the building, 
there was a man standing outside waving us down. From our car, we could clearly hear party music. It was almost deafening, as loud as a concert. This was a very old heritage-listed building, constructed around 1700. All of the windows were boarded up, but you could see what looked like flashing disco lights flooding through the cracks in the boards. The entire property was surrounded by a two-meter-high fence with barbed wire on top. Try as we might, we couldn't find a way in on our own, so we had to call the fire department for help. Thirty minutes later, with the fire department and more backup to help us catch possible squatters living in the house, everyone was in position to make entry. We breached the front door, with officers yelling, Police! to announce our presence. As soon as we walked through the door, the house was plunged into darkness and silence. We were all standing there looking around, and there was no one there but us. All 20 members of the police and fire department were just standing there looking at each other, with the most confused looks on our faces. The next night, I found out that that party house was sealed off over 40 years earlier, when another party guest had been killed and the house was deemed unsafe. The cause of death, unknown. But that house is so old, it never had any electricity, nor was it retrofitted for electricity. Yet on that night, over 20 professional people heard loud music from the 80s and saw disco lights through the cracks in the boards. To this day, my friends and I still don't know what it was all about, but we also don't talk about it much, either. One morning, my partner and I responded to a call for a possible burglary. The home was not far from our station. An elderly woman was living alone, and she was so terrified that she threw her keys down to us from the upstairs window because she was too afraid to walk through the house to open the door for us. We took a look around outside before going in, and there were no signs of forced entry of any kind. The home had a front gate, and everything appeared to be secure. We went inside and did a quick walkthrough through the upstairs. It was a row house, with the garage on the ground floor and the residence above. But it also had downstairs, right off the garage entrance, a rental unit. But nobody had lived there in years. The old lady told us that she had been sitting upstairs, when suddenly someone began banging loudly on the interior door leading down to the garage and the rental unit and they were rattling the door handle violently. She was very obviously frightened and believed that someone had gotten into the garage and was now trying to break into her home. Armed with this information, we pulled out our weapons and our flashlights, unlocked the interior door, and descended into the pitch blackness of the downstairs. What we found was like a living time capsule the entire downstairs area looked like it came straight from the 1950s. There was a lot of dust, but otherwise, it was perfectly preserved. There were potato chip bags, cans of beer, books, magazines, advertisements, all from the 1950s. The automatic garage door was no longer operational, but a large, pristine Cadillac sat in there, looking like it had never left the showroom floor. We found a door that led us to the clearly unoccupied rental suite, and it was filled with vintage furniture and appliances. The whole place looked like it belonged in the TV show Mad Men. But what really spooked me the most was the rental unit's bedroom. It looked as if someone had just gotten up, went out to run errands, then never came back. It was clearly the room of an elderly couple. It had framed black and white pictures on the walls, and personal items like combs, brushes, makeup, and jewelry on the dresser. There were old suits, dresses, and hats in the closet. We searched every possible place that a person could be hiding down there, and we found nothing. All of the doors and windows were locked and secured. There were no footprints in the dust, and nothing was disturbed. Nothing. I've been to many burglaries and home invasions, 
and I've never seen a place with absolutely no signs of an intruder. This was a first. I'm not sure what caused it, but while we were standing in the bedroom, every hair on the back of my neck was standing straight up. I even searched the same places twice because I just knew that someone was there watching me. I could feel it. But there was no one. No one was there, no matter where I looked. No one. We went back upstairs and told the old lady that we found nothing. And as we were leaving, we ran into her friend. It turns out she had called him, too. He's a firefighter from one town over. He verified that this wasn't the first time it happened, and that he had heard the banging himself and felt like he was being watched in the rental unit, too. He wouldn't give us his thoughts on what he thought it might be, despite my prodding, and we never found out who used to live in that downstairs unit. Could someone have broken in and left absolutely no sign of their presence? Sure, but in my experience, I don't know how. Could the woman have been suffering from dementia? Again, sure, but she was sharp as a tack when we spoke to her, and she didn't strike me as somebody with the mental condition. And her friend verifying the story kinda kills the dementia theory for me. Whatever happened, this woman was scared enough that I truly believe she experienced something. As my partner and I were leaving, he turned to me and said, I don't know, man. Do you believe in ghosts? And that was pretty much the end of us speaking about it. Was I dealing with a ghost that morning? Or the most impressive magician of a burglar, who didn't steal anything, by the way, that the world has ever seen? Who knows? But it sure was creepy. My friend works for the police in England. One night, there was a call to go out to a house in the middle of nowhere. I can't remember exactly what the call was about, but I think a woman called 999 and said she was being attacked. They got there and knocked on the door. There was no answer, but the door was unlocked, so they stepped inside, calling out police to let them know that they were there. But they couldn't find anything or anyone. After searching the whole house and finding nothing, they were about to leave. And as they did, the front door slammed shut and there were loud screams coming from all around them. The front door was locked and it had to be broken down so they could get out. Once they got out, the screaming stopped. They searched the entire house again and found no signs of any people at all nor did they find any speakers or anything at all that could project that kind of a sound. They also couldn't explain how the front door locked them in when it wasn't locked before. They just wrote it off to kids pranking them because they couldn't find any real explanation. But it definitely creeped them out. Well, you just never know where the danger's gonna come from, do you? This world or the next. Both can be pretty darn scary. That first story kinda creeped me out. How about you? What was your favorite? Let me know in the comments section below. I'd like to thank you all for listening and for your continued support. It's because of you that this channel continues to grow and I appreciate it more than you could ever know. So thank you. Just a quick reminder, because I'm now officially past 1,000 subscribers, my subscribers can now use the community tab on my channel. I'll leave a link in the pinned comment below. We can continue our discussions there in between Thursday videos. So if you've been on the fence about whether or not to subscribe, maybe this will give you that push that you need. But as always, Gate crashers are more than welcome. So now, until next time, stay scared, my friends. <laughs>